morning and welcome to the Brazilian American Chamber of Commerce's conversation on Brazilian foreign policy with Ambassadors Nestor Forster and Maria Nazareth Farani Azevedo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Welch. Let me thank the Brazilian American Chamber of Commerce for organizing this conversation this morning. We uh, both our countries enjoy what from the Brazilian point of view is the longest standing relationship, diplomatic relations we have with any other country in the world. We're gonna celebrate the bicentennial, 200 years just in, uh, in 2024. And uh, over that long period of time of friendship and uh, you know, relations which were sometimes uh, closer, sometimes not so close, but always friendly, uh, we have developed you know, a, a whole set of values that we share uh, as the two largest democracies, the two largest economies in the Western Hemisphere, I'm talking about uh, the you know, respect for democratic values, for human rights, for economic freedom, the rule of law, and so on. And uh, we see that uh, that is uh, increasingly important in the world we live in uh, today. Uh, as you all know, you know from uh, <clears throat> the very outset, from uh, the inauguration day, uh, President Bolsonaro addressed a letter to President Biden, reaffirming, you know the history I just mentioned, the shared values, and laying out uh, a very ambitious agenda looking forward uh, to our relationship. That letter uh, received a, a very positive uh, reply from President Biden in the same tone, you know, reaffirming the shared values and highlighting you know, what are the priorities for the US and the, uh, in its relationship with Brazil, uh, you know, in fighting the pandemic and addressing the whole uh, question of uh, climate change and so on. Uh, you know, beyond that, uh, we have had uh, high level contacts with, uh, with the new administration in all fronts, you know, from uh, the State Department, uh, the Treasury Secretary, uh, the Minister, the new uh, uh, Secretary of Agriculture, and so on, and um, others are taking place uh, uh, as we speak. All that, uh, you know, highlights the, the, the very intense agenda we have. First and foremost in that agenda comes the, the joint fight against the scourge of the pandemic. Uh, we have been cooperating over the past year in this, and we continue to do so with the Biden administration. Brazil is part of a very small uh, select group of countries that has been working together with the White House in, in trying to assess you know, forms of to treat the disease, to fight uh, the, the pandemic, uh, to address the whole question of vaccines and the logistics involved uh, in that, and now the challenge of variants uh, and so on. Uh, the U.S. has been uh, generous with us in that. There's lots of cooperation, both at the government level, at the private sector level as well. So we are, we are very thankful for that. As other countries, Brazil is prioritizing you know, the most vulnerable people, including you know, healthcare workers, the elderly, and also indigenous peoples. And that, that's, uh, that's something that I like to, to highlight because I think we have a good record to show for that. And that, 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 that has required a tremendous logistical effort on our part, including you know, the Ministry of Health, the armed forces and so on, in bringing the vaccines to the remote parts of the Amazon. And uh, we have so far uh, provided the first doses for 75, 75% 75 of the uh, Brazilian indigenous peoples and about 60% have already received the second doses. We have a whole set uh, of uh, uh, important uh, issues in our bilateral trade and investment agenda. The U.S. remains our number one partner in terms of investment, as you know. The latest data from the central bank shows that the U.S. has a, a FDI stock in Brazil of about $145 billion. That's about five times uh, what China has, $28 billion, just to provide some context. Of course, China has been for the past 10 years our main trading partner, even though uh, uh, our exports to China are concentrated in the agriculture and raw materials uh, sector, whereas to the US, we traditionally have exported uh, higher value added uh, goods. A couple of trade issues which are remain from, uh, you know, uh, from uh, the, the previous administration that we intend to solve as soon as possible. Uh, well, one big item is the renewal of the GSP, the general uh, system of preferences. Brazil is, is the one uh, of the great beneficiaries of, of that program. It expired last December. Uh, it's being considered for renewal by the, by the new administration, by the USDR, and also, of course, our friends uh, in the Hill here. And we are in touch with them, highlighting the importance we attach to an early renewal uh, of the program. There are also a couple of irritants that remain for our, our uh, uh, exports in the steel sector, uh, you know, which have fallen under the, the measures taken under Section 232. 
uh, we don't think that uh, that benefits anyone, including the American consumers, the American importers who were advocating early removal of those barriers, those tariffs and quotas uh, under Section uh, 232. Last year, we signed an important agreement for the joint development of defense projects, the so-called RDT&E uh, agreement. It's now before uh, the Brazilian Congress. It's being examined by the Foreign Affairs Committee in the House. There's a rapporteur already designated, and there's a sense of priority attached to that project. Just this past, uh, you know, late January, early February, we had what was the largest joint military exercise between Brazil and the United States, the so-called Operation Culminating. We had a whole company of parachutists uh, coming from Brazil and uh, using Brazilian equipment, the KC-390 manufactured by Embraer, and uh, those parachutists from Brazil invaded Louisiana here, <laughs> about 200 of them. It was uh, a very unique joint exercise, something that the United States has with only uh, a handful of countries, and Brazil is part to be, to be part of that uh, small group. There is also a very exciting uh, things that we are doing in the whole uh, area of energy cooperation. The US-Brazil uh, Energy Forum, USBEF, has uh, been taking a, an ambitious agenda to deepen our cooperation. In, uh, in new areas and in, in, uh, in, uh, areas that you know, open new possibilities for the future, including you know, uh, nuclear cooperation, nuclear energy with uh, you know, renewable fuels, biofuels, uh, also the, the whole uh, new area, which presents many opportunities in the sustainable aviation fuels, uh, SAF, which is a new area where we intend to work together. We have uh, working, been working together with the Biden administration in the area of uh, the environment, of climate change, and seeing what we can do together to promote sustainable development. Uh, we have advocated an early engagement in that area, and it's been proven to be very fruitful. I personally spoke with uh, former Secretary Special Envoy uh, John Kerry to get this going, and uh, we had a meeting between a ministerial level, uh, level meeting with our foreign minister, our minister of the environment, with Mr. Kerry in early February, and since then, We've been meeting regularly at the technical level, exploring ways uh, on, on how Brazil and the US can cooperate both at the bilateral level, you know, fighting deforestation in the Amazon, bringing economic opportunity for the 25 million Brazilians who live there in the bioeconomy and all these uh, great sectors uh, that, that we have uh, uh, there. And also on how we can work together uh, to make COP26 in November a great success. We just had a, a very important agreement signed late last year between the Ministry of Science and Technology Innovation in Brazil and the Smithsonian Institution, which you know it's the largest museums uh, institution in the world. And uh, this agreement has different components from preserving you know uh, our cultural heritage to working uh, jointly in bi on biodiversity. But the most uh, important aspect of this is the possibility that the Ministry of Education in Brazil. Uh, we'll be able to use materials produced by the Smithsonian to teach science in the public, uh, uh, public school system in Brazil. So this is a project that has tremendous uh, social and educational outreach, and uh, we, we're proud to have contributed to that. Uh, we are also about to sign uh, an agreement with NASA between uh, our uh, space agencies in Brazil, the Ministry of Science and Technology, and NASA uh, to, uh, to to bring Brazil on board of the Artemis project, which as you know, is the most ambitious space exploration project uh, in the world today, you know, should be, bring a woman to, to, to the moon uh, in the coming years. And then, uh, you know, a crewed mission to, to Mars uh, after that. So Brazil is, is very keen on, on joining. And, and we think that they, this will open great new opportunities for investment and joint development of, of products between Brazil and the United States. Uh, bom dia, bom dia a todos. Good morning to all of you. Um, <clears throat> let me start by thanking you, John, uh, for the invitation to be here today. It's a pleasure for me. Uh, a few days ago, um, in his inaugural speech, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Brazil highlighted three priorities for our uh, foreign policy at this moment in time. And he mentioned health, the environment and the economy. Uh, as you also know, Brazil today is in dire need of vaccines, equipments and medicines uh, for, for, uh, to deal and respond to the pandemics. 
Uh, I know we can also, we can work together, government and the private sector uh, to have, we can do that to have a central role uh, to, to help Brazil resolve this problem. Uh, the environment, the second priority given by the minister, minister uh, is really the elephant in the bigger room of the world agenda. And 2021, as stated by, by, by Ambassador Will Foster, is an, year, is an year of opportunity. We have two very important meetings coming up, one already next week, the other one at the end of the year in, in the UK. Um, I am sure that we can help build confidence, develop partnerships, and discuss and find sustainable solutions and ways forward. This could be our, our contribution to protect and preserve the Amazon and provide livelihoods to those who live in the Amazon, the 20 something million Brazilians who live in that region. Uh, because investments, if we build confidence, investments flow, trade follows suits, and the economy kicks back, as well as employment. The Amazon is the richest uh, region in Brazil in terms of natural resources but it's also the poorest in terms of human development. So we need to address that paradox. And President Bolsonaro uh, just reaffirmed that in a letter he sent to President Biden. Uh, the answer for that, in our point of view, was uh, done a while ago uh, with the whole idea of sustainable development. Uh, it's not that we have to make a choice between you know, bringing economic opportunity to the 25 million Brazilians who live in the region or caring about the environment. Both things should go together hand in hand. And, uh, you know, we, we have already pointed out many ways uh, that this can be done. And we have set up a process of technical consultations, bilateral technical consultations, which have been going on for the past uh, over two months. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll continue to move forward with a very intense agenda on what we can do. For instance, the, the whole question of scaling up whatever uh, projects we have. Uh, in, a, in a bioeconomy. There's a renewed interest from the private sector in, in, in coming to the table and, and bringing their resources and reducing their carbon footprint and using offset mechanisms and so on. So, you know, this is all being discussed and uh, we, we firmly believe that with the level of commitment that we are showing, the resolve at the highest level and the, the projects that we have on the ground, President Bolsonaro has signaled, for instance, you know, a, a renewed commitment to zeroing illegal deforestation by 2030 uh, has raised the possibility of anticipating that net zero transition in Brazil to 2050 if you know the resources uh, are, are there uh, has renewed our commitment to uh, consulting and uh, you know uh, opening a, a broad dialogue with civil society with the NGOs with the indigenous communities and so on so this is all very much welcome pointing in the right direction and opening up possibilities that will make you know the, 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 this sort of, a, of alliance between our countries uh, fruitful in, in, in this very crucial area. Brazil has challenges in the Amazon and we are like fighting uh, deforestation, fighting illegal fires, and we are dealing with that. We are approaching that. We have, we have always also good practices that we have to speak more about this. Our agriculture is very intensive, capital intensive, technology intensive. We don't need to grow into the Amazon to produce sustainable products. And we have a very restrictive, protective preserve, a law to preserve the Amazon also. 80% of the, of, the, of the land cultivated have to be preserved. So this is this is very important also to be there in the public. And we have good practices and good, uh, um, good intentions regarding the Amazon. I think uh, we live in unpredictable times and COVID has uh, heightened this unpredictability. So all the voices, all the collaboration that we can get are important at this moment. We all know that the demand for vaccines is much higher uh, than uh, the, the offer out there. So collaboration is needed. Politics play an important role and it's natural that politicians look at their own society first and then look elsewhere. But the pandemics will not be, the pandemic will not be resolved if there is not equal distribution of vaccines. This is the sustainable way 
to get out of the of the pandemic. Brazil had originally uh, set uh, the target of 2060 for the net zero transition to complete the net zero transition. And in this letter, the president has uh, brought forward the idea of anticipating uh, that in a decade to 2050, uh, you know, in, if we have, of course, the necessary resources. This is, this is not going to be a free lunch. It's going to be a, a very resource demanding uh, process. But Brazil is, a, is, is in a very good position to, to continue to move in that direction. Uh, re, bearing, recalling that Brazil began doing uh, his, uh, its process of, uh, uh, of uh, energy transition before we even were talking about climate change, you know, our, our ethanol program dates back to the late 70s. And we have uh, done great strides in uh, using uh, renewable fuels, both for land transportation. And now we are ready to also to tackle the whole question of aviation fuels, which brings, uh, you know, new opportunities for us to, to continue to work towards uh, the, the overall goal of uh, uh, reducing carbon emissions. Uh, look, the first thing to, to improve perceptions and to, to improve uh, image is to recognize that the problem is not only perceptions, not only image. There are real challenges on the ground. So for instance, when we talk about the environment, the Amazon and so on, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, at different moments, people would say that, you know, this is all a problem with, uh, with the press or certain political sector, et cetera and would try to, to ignore the challenges that we have on the ground. We do have challenges, you know, but it's nice bringing the facts to the table and laying out exactly what's going on. I think that's the best effort to improve perceptions. So for instance, in the question of deforestation, which is in, in everybody's mind, this is something that didn't begin the day President Bolsonaro was inaugurated two years ago. It actually began eight years ago, the trend, the upward trend in deforestation, and it's been going on. And in fact, it was the Bolsonaro administration who did something which was totally unheard of, which was to invoke very exceptional powers granted by our constitution to bring the armed forces to fight illegal fires and illegal deforestation in the Amazon. That's what we've been doing in the past two years. And uh, you know, there are results there and uh, they are preliminary. Uh, people are talking a, a lot now about the, the, the data for deforestation for the, the month of March which is historically, you know, this is from the experts, historically it's been a, a month where you have very, very little deforestation and the increase that we had for is this specific month, uh, it's something, you know, a little bit out of the curve, but it's not, uh, the impact is not as high as it would suggest. The important data, which is being missed in this discussion is the data from the past six months from August through January showing a dent in that upward trend of about 20%. In specific states like the state of Mato Grosso, that's about uh, over 30%, about a third of reduction in, in, in the illegal deforestation. And so, you know, what can we do? We can continue to, 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 to uh, publicize the facts and what we've been doing. And uh, that's what President Bolsonaro just did in his letter, including reaffirming the great credentials that Brazil has in the environmental area. Brazil has two thirds of its territory fifth largest country in the world, two thirds of which are covered by its original vegetation. That compares with 20% in the US and about 0% in many European countries. Brazil hosts the largest biodiversity in our planet. One thing that we haven't mentioned here today, Brazil has the cleanest energy matrix anywhere in the world. 46% of all energy used in Brazil comes from renewable sources, 46%. In the case of the electricity, it's 82%, 82% percent coming from hydro, coming from uh, biofuels, from renewable fuels. So, you know, Brazil, as, as people say, you know, it, uh, we are uh, an environmental powerhouse and we should bring those credentials to the table and not shy away from exerting the, you know, the leadership that we can do. And that's why I find very encouraging this uh, letter that President Bolsonaro just sent to President Biden, reaffirming this level of commitment uh, bringing new commitments to the table and basically saying that Brazil is totally open to cooperate with its, uh, its great partners, such as the United States, in, in fostering this agenda, you know, fighting climate change, bringing sustainable, uh, fulfilling the promise of sustainable development. We, the Brazilian agriculture in the last years have grown 700%, but in terms of area of production, only 30% has been increased. 
And I wanted to, to and also welcome you again to New York City, uh, Ambassador Azevedo, but thank you very much. Uh, in the, in Ambassador Forster was really very supportive while you were off in terms of, um, in terms of describing uh, uh, your possible contribution to come, really excellent. Um, also, thank you all for joining. Thank you.